So, um, Archaeological Awards. So, I'm here to talk to you about the Archaeological Achievement Awards. The first thing to know is you have seen these all before. They were the British Archaeological Awards. Okay. In 2020, the Republic of Ireland decided to join in, which is absolutely fantastic. But as you can imagine, the word British doesn't work terribly well uh, 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 for the whole of that island, hence the change in the name. So the Archaeological Achievement Awards have actually been running for quite a considerable amount of time. Um, but obviously, the CBA then decided to help out and take them on from, um, from, from the trust who was previously managing them. So what are they? The, achievement, uh, the Archaeological Achievement Awards are there to showcase the best in UK and Irish archaeology and celebrate all aspects of archaeology and its contribution to society and environmental sustainability. OK, um, we get funding from all of the home nations um, statutory agencies, which is fantastic. And we do get quite a lot of support from other um, sponsors and, and funders, um, which, again, will be an interesting conversation to come on to a bit later. Um, in the new guys uh, run by the CBA, we've had two award seasons now, 2021 and 2022. 2020 went by the wayside because of COVID. Um, we were due to be in Edinburgh Castle for 2021, but a storm stopped us. Uh, so Storm Barra actually made Edinburgh Castle too dangerous. Uh, they told us with less than 24 hours notice. Uh, but we flipped and we went online and it was quite good fun. Um, last year, we went to Dublin and we were hosted in Dublin Castle in St. Patrick's Hall, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. So, uh, and a few of you were actually there, which is good. So the awards, uh, in a sense, they are new. Um, before I started at CBA, I'd never run an award ceremony before or a process or anything like that. And we have literally rethought the whole process um, right from the top down. And we did that with a group. Of, um, we basically had a, a board who oversaw it. That board has now become the panel of judges, okay, which I'll come on to in a minute. But what we really wanted to do in, in creating the awards was ask ourselves, how can we create something that nominate, nominated um, uh, parties can actually demonstrate public benefit, the actual public benefit of what they're doing? So again, how do, would the awards stand proxy and demonstrate that? And that's the overarching issue of everything we try to do. So obviously, when you start talking about public benefit, there's loads of types of public benefit. How do you capture them all? Well. First thing we did is we looked at the type of award categories, but then we actually also looked at some cross-cutting themes. So the awards have a number of cross-cutting themes that we want people to think about. And they are equity, diversity and inclusion, health and well-being, collaboration, place shaping and innovation. And again, having only run two years, we are slightly trying to look at how we make these things better. So previously in 2021, we wanted you to address them all. Now we don't. What we want you to do is address equity, diversity and inclusion and one other. So again, we've just simplified that process. And that can just be, you know, it's a very simple process to actually do that. And I'll talk about the, 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 the application process a little bit later. So then we go on to the actual awards. There are five awards, again, all very specifically um, focused in on different areas. Public dissemination and presentation, engagement and participation, early career archaeologists, learning, training and skills, and new for this year, archaeology and sustainability. And when we talk about archaeology and sustainability, we're going to use the UN sustainability goals, and it's as broad as that. And the idea is that each nomination, actually, it's your job to say why you should be included in that category and why you should potentially win it. And then there is an Outstanding Achievement Award, which now is um, taken from one of the um, winning categories. And that's assessed separately. Anyone can actually nominate themselves for any award with the exception of the early career archaeologist, which has to be nominated by a third party. OK, and we are really open about what we call early career. So you could have had a career break um, and you could be coming back into archaeology. So we sort of roughly define it as within the first eight years of your career even if you started, went away for 20 years and then came back again. So again, it's about making it as open as possible. The application forms I'll show you in a minute. What they do is they say, you tell us how you meet this criteria. Okay. So again, which is something I think is really important is the guidance that actually goes to tell you how you actually, how you actually apply for things. Um, we've done quite well in terms of nominations over the last two years. We've had over 130 um, applications. 
two really interesting things. It's not been even. We had a lot in the very first year, which is immediately post-COVID. Not quite so many last year, but each category had to, had to be shortlisted, which is fantastic. Geographically, all across the UK and Ireland, with the exception of Wales. Anyone from Wales, please just put a nomination in. Uh, it, that would be really, really great. And I have to say there is a, a marked lack of commercial units applying. Um, and again, that's something I'm really keen to actually hear more about and talk about as we go through. What makes a good application? So again, early career, it's actually about showing their impact. And again, how you, how you write it. Um, if you're looking at um, the overall winner from, from last year, the newest virtual archaeology project, it included everything. Really great dissemination, really great engagement, but also a little bit of innovation and thinking about things and actually taking a part, you know, a bit of archaeological heritage that's, that's remote and bringing it into the centre. Um, there's been a couple of really good um, commercial projects who have, have submitted. Um, so we had um, the Wessex um, Formal Learning Programme, which again was just a really good one in the learning, training and skills. It worked really well. And then Pop Idol, which actually was an AMS project in the Republic of Ireland at Rathcrogan, which was fantastic. So they found this amazing piece of wood that is an idol and they just did so much engagement work around it. Uh, and they actually came across and demonstrated that and, and actually talked about that really well. And you could actually see that in, in the in the application. So the, again, the whole point here is this is trying to cover all uh, um, output that we can consider as being done by archaeologists or around archaeology and the process. So how do you apply? Well, basically, you apply online through the CBA. There's an online portal. You fill out an online form. And I can tell you, we have absolutely made this as simple as possible. So for each of the criteria, uh, for each of the awards, you will be the, each criteria is listed. You are told how many words you need to put, and you are told how many points you're going to score within that e equal that box. Okay, it's as simple as that. Okay, and um, we list out again how you can do that for the cross-cutting themes, and then what supporting information you need. Um, when we get on to talking about what makes a successful application, I can tell you there are two things that make a successful application. Um, think about it before the deadline, okay? Because I can tell you 90% of the applications came in on the final day. The final day of these awards have become my most stressful day at work, okay? Because you are literally waiting for the applications to come in. And some people clearly haven't picked up the application form before that morning, okay? And the second really important thing is actually answer the questions we ask you um, and focus in on them. They're focused there for a reason. Because when a judge has 20 pieces of paper in front of them, they, they don't have the time to actually read every single piece of word or supporting information. They are focusing in on what they're doing and, and we've guided everything to give that answer. So what you write becomes really, really important. And it's a case of how you actually focus that. And again, we've been really specific about supporting information. In the first year, people were putting in reams and reams of supporting information. Well, you can't act, you know, they were putting in 10 minute long films. No judge is going to look 10 minutes. We're very specific about what we ask for there. And again, that is really important. The more we can put in at this stage with the guidance, it actually makes your application process a lot easier. But you really do need to look at it um, beforehand. How do we judge it? Well, as I said, we have a judging panel. That judging panel was actually involved in the recreation of them. It was originally chaired by Carenza Lewis. Uh, and it included um, uh, representing representatives of all the groups and, and the whole sector. It's now chaired by Jeanette Plummer-Sires. And um, what happens is as uh, soon as the closing date happens, CBA, we don't do any of the judging. We just do the processing. So we check all the applications and information is all there. We then put it all online. We then contact the judges and we have a two-stage process. First off, everything is shortlisted. So we look at each of the categories we actually do an initial sift and we create a shortlist. Those shortlists are then looked at, at in detail in groups of judges. So there will be five groups of judges and they will look in detail and they, will, they the judges, have to decide which application either wins or is highly commended. Okay, so it's a two-stage process and at all times everything is recorded. Why we do it like that is it enables us to think if there are any conflicts of interest and actually how we can juggle those and move those around. 
And um, for example, last year, um, one of the category winners, when they went to the overall winner, one of the judges actually had to leave the meeting because it was an organization they were associated with. Okay, so the CBA manages all of that, that process to keep us focused. And that really, in a nutshell, is, is, is the awards. This year, the awards will be formally opened on the 15th of July during the first day of the CBA's Festival of Archaeology, which will be at Powers Castle in Wales. Nominations will close at 12 p.m. That's noon. OK, 12 p.m. noon on Friday, the 15th of September 2023. OK, so again, in our first year, we shot them at midnight. Really bad idea. OK, um, and on a Sunday night, even worse, uh, um, we had 29 applications at 8 p.m. that Sunday evening and we ended up with over 90. Uh, just don't ask. It was completely stressful. Um, but so, yeah, open from the 15th of September, uh, 15th of July to the 15th of September. And the ceremony will be a, in late November, one of the last two Fridays in November. We're just waiting on confirmation of the actual venue. And I can tell you the, um, when we actually do meet in person, it's a really good crack. Um, Dublin Castle was absolutely amazing last year. The Minister of Culture basically um, came along and, and it worked really well. We had over a hundred people in the room um, and there was a really good um, feeling about it. And then really importantly, what we do is we take the awards and we create a booklet. And for me personally, this is, this is the objective. Because if we can start to share this around and actually share this, this becomes a statement about the public value of archaeology. And I think that is the sole purpose of the awards. That's really where we've got to go with this. And I'm really interested in actually how do we make this booklet or whatever we want to produce. It might be an iDoc in the future, completely interactive. Um, enable you to demonstrate the impact of your work. So again, a direct line from the work you do through the awards to actually then how we present those. But in a nutshell, that is the Archaeological Achievement Awards. There are lots of booklets from last year. There's some on the front, some at the back. Please do take them to have a think. And if you've got any questions, do ask me later. But that's the Archaeological Achievement Awards.